Hi and welcome or welcome back. Schminke, a German paint manufacturer, has released a new series of paints called Horadam Naturals. These are all made from natural pigments and are said to be the natural combination of watercolors and gouache. I have 10 of these paints here, one set of five paints as well as five others. And I will introduce the whole series to you first, then we will swatch these. I will show you a speed painting and after that we will have a small giveaway. Here you can see Schminke's website. These new paints are part of their Horadam series, which are their professional paints. There are 16 colors in this series and these are exclusively produced using natural earth pigments and plant resins or extracts. They are 100% vegan, based on gum arabic, they dry matte and they are mostly semi-transparent or transparent. They can be mixed with regular watercolor and gouache and most of these are very light fast. They can be used on almost all types of paper, they can be used pure or diluted with water and they are water soluble and reusable after drying. They are also said to have a slight odor, which I haven't noticed yet to be honest, and they are available in 15 milliliter tubes and two theme sets. This is a website where I tend to buy my art supplies. The 15 milliliter tubes cost around 12 or 13 euros, depending on where you buy them. And the theme sets cost around 55 euros. There is the plant pigment set as well as the mineral pigment set. I bought the plant pigment set and together with the five other tubes I spent around 110 euros for 10 15 milliliter tubes. This is a cleaned up screenshot from the shop website with the English names added. The plant set includes curcuma, Lake, indigofera, dias green and steel de grain. The mineral set includes leveret violet, celadonite, yellow ochre, caucasus earth and green slate. I purchased individually rugen chalk, kamala, dragon's blood, graphite black and vine black. I know that I have a preference for very colorful and vibrant paints, so that is why I chose the plant pigment set over the mineral set. But I left the option open to buy the mineral set later by making sure that the paints that I bought individually do not overlap with the set to avoid duplicates. I also figured that I would not need a third red color so that is why I skipped out on red bowlers. I will read the English descriptions of all of these paints to you in a moment when we get to the swatches. Learning about these paints is a lesson in geography, history, chemistry and even more, so it was quite interesting to learn more about the background of each paint. Just to take a quick look at the packaging here, this is the plant pigment set and it's labeled in German, English and French. The backside gives you the same information that I read to you at the beginning, except it also mentions that these are exclusively plant-based resins and extracts because it is the plant set. The tubes also give you all the necessary information. There's the name of the color in German, French and English again. There's the pigment information on the back as well as the stars which indicate the light fastness and the little square which indicates how opaque or transparent a paint is. I think I will head straight to the swatches with you. These tubes are filled to the brim, which is why I got some paint on myself and on my swatch card just from opening these tubes. But this was also a great first test to see if I could rewrite them and lift them off this paper. If this hadn't been possible, I would have changed the order that I swatched these in, but these came off without a hitch. Our first color is one of my individual purchases, Rügen Chalk. It's a warm, light, fast white, but not very opaque. This is a genuine chalk pigment. Chalk has been used in cave paintings and still remains visible in such locations today. If you're wondering what Rügen is supposed to be, that's a German island located up here. 
close to the Polish border and it's famous for its white chalk cliffs, similar to the white cliffs near Dover in England. These paints have a very interesting texture. They feel almost gel-like and they also dry streaky unless you water them down a lot. The Kamala that I have here was also extremely bubbly. It's a lovely warm yellow ochre and very light fast. Kamala is extracted from the glands and tufted hairs of the fruits of the monkey face tree or Kamala tree, which to be honest sounds like a pain to extract on your own. I was extremely excited about the next one, Dragon Blood. According to a legend, there was a bloody battle between an elephant and a dragon. The blood mixed on the ground and a tree grew in the spot. This paint is made from the resin of the dragon's blood tree and the dragon's blood tree grows on the Arabian Peninsula. The dragon blood tree looks like this and is also the national tree of the country of Yemen. Since I had decided to swatch all of my individually purchased tubes first, I'm now swatching graphite black. In contrast to the other paints, the two blacks are very opaque. Graphite has been mined for thousands of years and it's been used for drawing since ancient times. Since the 16th century, a graphite clay mixture has been used in almost all pencils. Next up is Vine Black. Can't tell it yet, but it heavily granulates. It also leans slightly blue when mixed with white. And this pigment is created by carbonizing young shoots of grapevines. Having two blacks is of course not really necessary. When I bought these based on the pictures online, I thought the graphite black would be the one I would use less often because of its matte appearance. But now that I've painted with these, I can say that I used the vine black a lot less because of the heavy granulation. It really depends on what kind of subject you want to paint. In my case, I preferred having the non-granulating graphite black. So these are the five paints that are bought separately and I'm going to swatch the plant set next. You can see that all of these are relatively thick and gel-like and the granulation of the vine black on the right side is starting to show more. But the streakiness that you might have noticed before is nothing compared to what we're going to see now. So the pictures online of these colors are actually fairly accurate. You can see all of your brush strokes here even when I use some of my softest brushes and this effect only lessens if you're using a lot of water. These paints also dry in your palette and feel a little sticky when you re-wet them. But I do like the way this paint looks. This here is actually a mix of curcuma and indigo, two other paints that we will see here. Curcuma is made from the roots of the curcuma plant, a type of ginger plant. And it's particularly been important in Indian culture. This is a lovely yellow and I have no idea why the picture on the website as well as on the packaging indicates that it would be orange. The red that is included in the plant set is meadow lake, which is made from the meadow root. In comparison to the dragon's blood, this is significantly more brown and a bit darker in its mass tone. Next up is Indigo Ferra, which is obtained from the Indigo Ferra plant. This is shown online as being a bit grayish blue, but in person it looked really properly blue to me, not very gray. I really love this one and I don't have any other blue like this in my palette. This pigment has been used since 3000 before Christ, so it's a really old pigment as well. And our final paint is Steel the Grain, a yellowish green brown. And for the longest time I thought this would be a very brown brown and I was very surprised by the way it actually looks in person. Apparently this was quite a popular pigment until the late 19th century 
but to be honest, it's my least favorite paint out of all of these. So these were all of the paints that I own, but I also want to introduce the ones that I don't own to you really quickly because there's just six more of them. There is yellow ochre, which is part of the mineral set. It's made from natural iron oxide and it's one of the oldest pigments. There's also Caucasus Earth, which is a cool olive green, which is semi-opaque and made from a pigment obtained in the Caucasus. The Caucasus region is the region here between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, where Georgia, Azerbaijan, Armenia and a bit of Russia are located. The mineral set also includes two more greenish pigments. There is Celadonite, which is a light green-gray, and Green Slate, which is a cool gray with hints of green. The greenish color of Green Slate comes from various minerals that I don't know how to pronounce. Last but not least in the mineral set is Leverite Violet. It's a violet brown made from andesite rocks, which originate from lava flows. And our final paint is called Red Bolus and it's made from reddish colored clay. This particular pigment comes from a deposit in Germany, in Bavaria, in a region called Upper Franconia. I decided against buying the Red Bolus because I'd already bought the Dragon Blood and the Meadow Lake. And I figured I wouldn't need a third red color. But I really like that between the Rügen chalk and this red bolus pigment from Bavaria, we have two colors where the pigments originate from deposits in Germany. I think it's always nice when manufacturers work with materials that are local to them. Now let's look at the swatches again now that they have dried. There are still a ton of bubbles on the Kamala. And I tried re-wetting them to get rid of them, which helped a little bit. You might also notice that the graphite black actually has a very matte graphite sheen, which is very interesting. True to what Schminke promised, you can re-wet these quite easily. And here is the full swatch sheet with the names of the colors added. I noticed that the packaging sometimes diverted a bit from the way that these paints looked. This particularly annoyed me for the curcuma and the steel de grain. The steel de grain looks like it would be a very dark brown, which is very much not the case. Another thing that I was curious about is whether or not you can erase the graphite black. And this actually works to a degree. I also wanted to check how similar these are to paints that I already own. And the Kamala is quite similar to my Quinacridone Gold Hue, which is also by Schminke. Like I mentioned before, I also don't have a match for Indigo Farah. Neither my Indigo from White Knights nor my Prussian Green, which look slightly similar, are actually good matches. I do have a green by Holbein, which looks similar to Dyer's green. And I've never seen anything like the steer de grain. It doesn't fit an olive green and it also doesn't fit my yellows. It's somewhere in the middle. I do have a heavily granulating black, which is Daniel Smith's Luna black. And I wanted to compare it to the vine black. So I applied both of these wet on wet to see if the granulation would look different. This exercise was actually quite illuminating because look at how the Luna Black spreads here with the water and then look at how the Horadam Naturals Vine Black just doesn't move that much at all. The granulation pattern has some similarities but also some differences. The Luna Black has some areas where there's a lot of water and tiny clusters of pigment and this almost looks like an inverted version of the darker areas next to it. Also you can see that the pigments traveled a lot further with the Luna Black. Some have pooled at the edges of the wet area. Next I wanted to put the claim that these paints work well on almost all types of papers to the test a bit and I tried these on Hahnemühle's toned watercolor paper and I actually really like how these showed up here. 
The only one that was a bit underwhelming was the Rügen Chalk because it's just not opaque enough to really show up. I was also curious how well you can rewet these on different paper types. I'm quite familiar with gouache, which you can still move around as much as you want if you use enough water, but it can be a bit tricky to layer it. So I tried these paints on my Avalon paper from my art supply hall in Japan, which does not allow for a lot of lifting. So I let these paints dry on the paper and attempted to lift them. And try as I might, I could only lift them to some degree. This actually made me relieved because I was a bit nervous they would be difficult to layer. I also got out a bit of gouache from the brand Holbein to get a bit of a comparison going. I would say that you can lift gouache a bit more than the Horodam Naturals paints. Now that I've done a full painting with the Horodam Naturals, I can also say that they do not feel like gouache when you're working with them. My impression is that the performance of the Horodam Naturals will depend a lot more on the properties of your paper, similar to watercolors. Layering these paints does not necessarily disturb the underlying layer, in particular if you're using a light wash and a soft brush. I only had some difficulties with the yellow one because I went back and forth with my brush over the paint. Let's take a look at our possible color mixes with these paints. So these are Curcuma, Meta Lake and Indigo Fera. Meta Lake and Curcuma mix a nice, slightly brownish orange. Watered down this could even be a nice skin tone. Curcuma and Indigo Fera mix basically dyer's green, but this is also mentioned on dyer's green that it uses these same pigments. Meta Lake and Indigo Fera mix more of a grey than a violet. I also made a mixing chart for all of my paints. The way that this is set up, I put down all the paints in a diagonal line and then I put down the mixes on the bottom left side and a watered down version of each mix on the top right side. So these are the color combinations you can get by mixing two colors of the plant set. We're basically getting a bunch of warm greens and oranges, one brown grayish violet and a more turquoise blue. We also get a reddish brown by mixing Meta Lake with Dyer's Green. Here is the full mixing chart with my other five paints added. Let's take a bit of a closer look. I can say that I really like the Rügen Chalk for its mixing capabilities. I would also strongly recommend getting either the Graphite Black or Vine Black. These will open up so many more possibilities. Just keep in mind that the Vine Black will add granulation to all of the mixes. But this can also be a really cool effect. I admit I was a little bit sad about the lack of a premixed brown. Based on the packaging, I thought that steer de grain would be much more brown than it is. And I went through several mixes trying to find a good brown. In the end, I liked none of these. But during my painting, I found that Meta Lake and Graphite Black mixed the kind of brown that I was looking for. It's this one here, just mixed with slightly more red. Now we are finally getting to the speed painting. I spent a long time contemplating what kind of subject I could paint and what paper to use. I figured I had enough oranges, reds and blacks to paint this portrait of Luke Skywalker in his X-Wing. So I transferred my sketch to my watercolor paper using a light box. And since these paints are mostly transparent, I erased the lines a little bit using a kneaded eraser just to make sure they wouldn't show up in the finer painting. I had a feeling my choice of paper would make or break this painting. Since this is a portrait, I didn't want his skin to appear streaky. So I chose my Saunders Waterford 100% cotton cold pressed paper. I know this paper is great at helping you achieve smooth washes and gradients. And I know the cold pressed surface of this paper still allows me to paint a good amount of detail. I also own the hot pressed version of this paper, which is smoother, but I haven't tried it yet and I didn't feel comfortable trying both new paints and new paper in the same painting. But since I had done my sketch on a different piece of paper, if this had failed by any chance, then I could have transferred my sketch to a different type of paper and just tried it again. So this was a bit of added reassurance for me. 
In the end, this was very enjoyable to paint though. The paper allowed for just the right degree of lifting and the paints worked wonderfully wet and wet because I had a great amount of control over where I put them. This was particularly helpful for achieving the used look on his helmet. I used almost all of the colors for this painting. I think the only one I didn't use is the dyer's green. This painting took around six hours to paint in total. Most of the portraits that I've done recently only took around two or three hours. So admittedly, I was a bit burned out by the time I was done. But the details in particular on his visor were a lot of fun to paint. I must admit that initially I was very nervous about these paints, but I was able to achieve everything that I wanted and use all of the techniques that I needed for this painting. I also genuinely like the way they look and I'm very satisfied with how this painting turned out. Even though I couldn't really tell what was going on in the reference image on the left side of his face because it's hidden in the shadows, but I managed somehow. The likeness for Luke Skywalker isn't 100% there, but I hope he's still recognizable enough. There are around 4 minutes left in this speed painting, so I will put on some spacey music for you and I will be back with a summary of my thoughts about these paints and the giveaway later.
This is the finished painting and I'm very happy with it and I also like the matte appearance of these paints when they're dry. I was surprised how well I was able to mix the skin tones with this set. I don't quite remember how I mixed the oranges. I think I used curcuma and metallic but also curcuma and dragon's blood sometimes. At any rate, I'm very happy with the appearance of these colors. I do fear that I used the paints up a little faster than I would use watercolors up though. So would I recommend these paints? Yes. However, I would mainly recommend them for more experienced watercolor artists. A beginner might be a bit confused by the texture of these paints and the streaky appearance. I think more experienced watercolor artists will have more fun with these paints, in particular if you own a bunch of different cotton papers that you can try these paints on and who will have a bit of an easier time handling the consistency of these paints. Of course, these are also a great option for environmentally conscious artists. I do not have the time nor patience to go out into nature and harvest my own pigments. I'm even too impatient to grind pigments into watercolors. So these are a wonderful alternative. And I think this could also be a great option for watercolor artists who are feeling a little bit burned out and are looking for something new and exciting. If you do want to get these paints, I would highly recommend buying one of the blacks and perhaps the Rügen chalk. The most limiting factor is probably going to be the availability of these paints in your country, which brings us to the little giveaway. I would like these paints to go to someone who doesn't have access to them. So this giveaway is open internationally, but closed to German residents. I am giving away half-sized pens of all 10 paints that I showed you in this video in this little travel palette. This one can hold six or seven half-sized pens and you could probably fit some sideways into the middle. All of these are labeled with the information that was on the tubes. When I put all of the half pens in, it felt a bit too tight to put seven in a row. So I only put six of them, but you can add anywhere between two to 10 other half pens into this palette. I'm also going to include this little pack of Hannemühle Agave watercolor paper into the giveaway. There are 12 sheets in here and I've used up two, so there's 10 left, but this isn't really my size to work on. So I will include this in the giveaway as well. So the giveaway is very simple. Please just like this video and subscribe to my channel. In my previous giveaway, I had some trouble figuring out if people just wanted to talk about the giveaway or join the giveaway. So please leave a comment that makes it very clear if you want to participate in the giveaway or not. As I mentioned, this giveaway is open internationally, but close to German residents and it will run until the end of March. So I will announce the winner in early April. I'd also love to hear your thoughts about these paints in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.